Now, let me welcome on to the Field of 68's oh. Big East Media Day coverage. Uh, the guy that's won back to back the national championships. Smile's pretty big, man. Yeah, I'm a, well, I'm almost done. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got four o'clock practice and we were dreadful yesterday. So my mind is has drifted there of recently. It's, it's thinking about how you're going to make these guys pay for what I you mean, had to deal with as a coach. I mean, just we, yesterday, we, we were just so far from where we need to be. And it was just, it was incredibly frustrating. And the thing with me is I, you always know where you stand with me, which yes. I think is. Yeah. I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> but I also think it's a good thing because I think the worst thing for people a lot of times is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And I think with me, it's, it's always pretty certain how I feel about something. Yep. So I watched the, the exhibition against Rhode Island and I thought that there were some really good things that came out of it. Solo specifically, I thought Aiden, look, he's got a little bit of shit to him. The rebounding. I know you weren't very happy about that. Mm -hmm. When you lose Donovan Klingon a year after losing Adama Sonogo, that mm -hmm. you're going to have a void to fill there on the interior. Yeah, yeah. How is that kind of coming along? Yeah, I, I don't even know. I would say defensive rebounding because I do think offensive rebounding will continue to be a strength for us. Um, you know, because we do have athletic bodies. Uh, we do shoot a lot of threes uh, and we're relentless with how hard we play. So, Offensive rebounding, I think, will continue to be a strength for us. Um, you know, the defensive rebounding is is certainly a concern. When you saw that box score and it said eighteen offensive rebounds, did was the ga the, the steam coming out of your ears? Yeah, out of your I, mean, eyes? I was losing my mind. And four of them, you know, quite honestly, four of them were were free throw rebounds. You know, which were I love that, which were incredible to me. And and Caravan was involved in three of them. So. Uh, you know, which was off off brand for Alex, and but we covered that video the next day. But um, you know, listen, Samson, you know, Samson is at a disadvantage. Uh, I think the last thing that you do uh, in terms of getting ready for the season is is turn your attention to like rebounding drills. Mm -hmm. I don't think any coach early on in like in like early October practices, mid October practices. You're so afraid that you're going to lose a player to like an ankle injury in a defensive rebounding drill that you kind of save a lot of that stuff for when you get closer to yeah. the start of the season. So I'm, uh, there's obviously some things we got to mitigate from a physicality standpoint there. We're going to need our, our wings, you know, uh, we're going to need the gang rebound, but I, I think uh, I think we'll be okay. So solo balls performance, 18 points. There's been a little bit of buzz coming out of uh, stores about him and it looked like he was kind of living up to that height is that what you've been seeing out of him all all spring and summer and i guess the fall so i would solo the what what kind of got us to the conclusion that you know we believe as a sophomore he could be a big jump player is you know we we, we uh we liken his performance versus carolina mm -hmm. here at msg yes, yeah. to what what hawk does as a freshman in the bahamas versus auburn mm -hmm. you know where he had that moment as a freshman multiple times where he flashed versus high-end teams and uh you know where we could project out that there's going to be a huge huge sophomore year bump for him and uh I'm, I'm pretty confident in him I, I i that that sophomore class is going to determine a lot of where this season goes for us you didn't lose anyone in that sophomore class and if you kind of look at the way that the season played out. Solo played a bunch early. I mean, it's kind of dwindled once you got into the meat of Big East play. Jalen didn't play a ton of minutes, right? Jaden kind of fell off once you got into the year. Yusuf didn't play all that much. And they didn't leave. Like, in an era of college basketball where everybody is going to the portal, you didn't have anyone portal. When you got highly recruited kids, mm -hmm. that didn't play. Yeah. Why? How? <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. They just uh, got to sit there and practice and listen to you. It's like, yeah, let's do this again. Run it back, coach. Yeah. Stockholm syndrome. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I, I listen. I think we we've got uh, you know culture and an organization that uh, I'm demanding. It's uh, it's an intense environment, but there's a lot of evidence that the, 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 yes. that there's a real brotherhood and a, and a connection and trust and, and and relationships, and that you also will maximize your career with us. You'll mm -hmm. experience incredible moments with your team and have a chance to win championships. And then you're going to maximize your ability to get to the NBA or, or maximize your career. So, um, and I think that's what quality people want to be in that environment. I'm obviously not easy to play for. I'm not easy to work for. Um, 
but I do have a different side to me when I'm not coaching them uh, where we connect in a much different way. Well, I, I do want to ask you about that and give you a lot of credit because you have been, since you won the title, you've been very open about the, the struggles that you've had with mental health. And I think that a lot of people, you know, we lost someone to suicide in my family and you talked this, uh, I think it was like three weeks ago about you've dealt with some of that before, right? Like one, why are you so comfortable speaking about that publicly? And two, do you realize that that probably has more of an impact than anything that you're going to do as a coach? Like I gave you a lot of credit. For yeah. I mean, if, you know, for me, I think uh, there's a lot of people that UConn fans or sports fans or young coaches or just people in general that are, you know, looking for people to model certain things and people that publicly, you know, visually have a lot of success mm -hmm. and then visually are this like tough guy winning, talking shit, fighting with fans, right? Whatever, right? you know, like there's this perception of me that, uh, or, or perception of people in my position that you don't it looks struggle. Like everything is going well for you, right? It doesn't. I mean, you have the same struggles in, in relationships. You have mm -hmm. the same struggles uh, you know, with mental health or your emotional well-being or things that you're prioritizing, or sometimes you feel stressed out or overworked, or sometimes you're dealing with failure and or or different frustrations that arise, and just that you have to continue to work on yourself and you have to do things. There's so much, uh, th 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 there's so much science and information out there on ways that you could improve your emo emotional well-being that you can improve your physical state that then will impact the way you feel emotionally about yourself so uh i'm open talking about it i think it's the responsibility that i have with the platform i have well i i respect that a lot more than uh, i respect the the work that you've done as a coach i will say that Thank last you, thing i got for you yeah has lavelle sanders apologized to you yet colonel for getting in foul trouble do you remember going on the oh platform? i know man i know i you know got foul trouble what did iverson give you 42 no, don't, please don't. You don't have to add on, uh, 39. Um, and it was like, and it happened so fast and he picked those fouls up so fast and, and, um, it was 39 points. And then I just pleaded with coach Blaney, like zone, like two, 23, 23. Can we go zone for possession? This guy's wearing me out. And then I'm in front of the Georgetown bench in the second half. And we're still playing man and I'm getting destroyed. And I'm thinking, and you know, like when you're playing on the ball and you're a point guard and the other player that you're guarding, the point guard comes down, he show, does a signal, mm -hmm. you signal to your bench and scouting. So if they put up a yeah. fist or something, you signal to your bench like fist. And then the scout coach is supposed to say, yo, yo screen to screener, you know, stagger screen, the back door or whatever. John Thompson was just going like that. So I was waving at the bench. I was waving at the bench. Hey, they're running that. And then I looked at myself. No, they're just clearing it out. You moron. <laughs> well, listen, man, I appreciate the time. Let's Best go. of luck this season. All right. Go Stairway Husky. to seven. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, Stairway to seven. Three Pete. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're locked in, man. We're going so hard for it. Let's go. Yep. Appreciate, appreciate you, coach. Bro.